Well, good evening, and I'm glad that you're with us tonight. And I hope that you had a wonderful and happy new year, a safe time. God bless you for joining with us tonight. Tonight, we're continuing in our series on Ruth and looking at how uh, Ruth is looking for grace. And this series works so well with our Sunday morning series, The Awfulness of Lostness, Church as we begin 2021. Let's not forget the importance of sharing the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ and the great commission that our Lord has given to us. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can begin this time of worship and praise tonight. Father, we do pray that we will be faithful in sharing the wonderful gospel of grace. And we are thankful for the grace that has been given to us to forgive us of our sins and to help us as we live for you each and every day. Already, we pray for those that are on our prayer list tonight. And Father, as we look back at uh, the year 2020, Father, there are many families that have suffered bereavement, sickness, disappointments. Father, I pray, Lord, that 2021 will be a new start. Help us to stay focused upon upon you and your work, that we will serve you faithfully in this year. And we pray this in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the I could not lie in desperation. I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The word finished, the end is risen, Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace, the God of Oh, 
Tonight, as I look at our prayer list, I am mindful of the fact that we have a number of people that are dealing with cancers. But, uh, you know, as I think about our congregation, most of the people I know, in fact, I'm trying to think. Our people live with cancer, and God has gotten great victories. Uh, but as I'm sitting here thinking, um, no one comes to mind that actually died of cancer. I'm sure if I think about it hard enough, uh, name will come to me, but the word cancer still is a very frightening thing when the doctors give you that prognosis. My wife has gotten that uh, diagnosis twice now, once for lymphoma and once for uh, melanoma. I'm going to ask Donna to come and pray for the various folks that are on our prayer list uh, with cancer tonight. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege, first off, there is to come to you and to uh, ask for you to uh, be with these that are dealing with uh, cancer, Father. I'm a living proof, Father, that you are not finished with me yet, and you're not through with some of these people yet either, Father. But with me, Father, it was always to live is to die. To, to live is to, uh, to live is to be a joyful thing to be here. Well, Lord, if we die, Father, we're going to be with you, and that's the ultimate healing. And Father, we thank you so much for that joy and that peace of knowing that you're here with us here on earth, dealing with us on a day-to-day -day basis, Father, with the battles, the pains, the chemotherapies, the, the not knowing with the reports, Father, the different things that come up every single day, Father, the way that Satan can just attack you, attack your mind, Father, and I just thank you so much that you were there with me, Father, every single step of the way. You're there with me every step that I take forward, Father. We don't know the days that we are to live here on this earth, but Father, I know that with me, I am obviously not through here on this earth, and I pray, Lord, that you would be with me every day, that I am mindful of that, and that I will witness more and more for you every single day, Father, that more would come to know your glory, Father, and that when they do die, they die the best death ever, Father, but it's not really a death. It's just leaving this place, Father, and going to live with you forever. Father, I thank you for those in my family, Father, that are encouragement to me whenever I've gone through this. Father, I pray that we would all be encouraging to each other with our prayers. Lord, when people come up in our minds, that we would pray for them that very, very moment, Father. I pray that you would be with my sisters and brothers in our family, in our church family right now, Father, that are dealing with different types of cancers, Father. You are the great physician. I pray, Lord, that you would be with every single doctor that is to deal with each of these lies, Father. I know that you can do miracles through the lives of these men and women that have been gifted to touch lives, be able to help them with the certain kinds of chemotherapies they have to go through, or Father, just the different things that they have to go through to deal with cancer in their lives. I thank you again, Father, for what you've done in my life. Father, I thank you. You're a miracle-making, giving, creating God, Father, you have not given up on us. You are there for us. You are there for us now as we call on you. And we thank you so much for that peace that we can have even when we deal with these kind of sicknesses. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Well, tonight we are continuing in our series, The Unexpected Kindness of God. From the book of Ruth, it's a story of redemption. Tonight, we are looking at how that Ruth is looking for God's grace. And so, we are now in chapter 2, looking at verses 1 through 3. If you would stand with me, I'd like to read these verses aloud. And those of you that are joining us online, will place those verses up on the screen. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech. 
and his name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Let's pray again. Father, again we come before you today. And Father, we pray again for those on our prayer list. Father, I pray for those that are here tonight. And Father, those that are watching online. Father, I pray that if there's someone that is listening, that they would hear your Holy Spirit speak to their heart. Whether it's a believer that needs to make a firm commitment as we enter into this new year to serve you more fully or someone who needs to receive you as their personal Lord and Savior, discovering the grace that forgives sin and gives us a purpose to live. Father, I pray that we would share the hope that is in Christ with this community and with our world. Father, help us to learn about that even from this Bible study tonight from the wonderful book of Ruth. And we pray this in the wonderful, powerful, and beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as we look at the book of Ruth, we've already been introduced to a number of characters, but there are now three primary personalities that are presented in the book of Ruth that we will concentrate on. The first continues to be this woman named Naomi. Naomi is a picture of a backslidden believer. Remember, her and her husband, Elimelech, had packed up. They decided that God had not blessed them enough in the promised land because there was a famine. And so they left being close to God and went to the land of Moab, which is a picture of a believer walking away from the Lord and intentionally walking away into a place of sin. Again, a picture of a black backslidden believer. She wandered away from the Lord, and because of that, she paid a heavy price because of her sin. We know that her husband had passed away while in Moab. She lost her sons in Moab, and so she had lost hope. Well, we're going to also see another person in this book that is very important, and his name is Boaz. Boaz is the kinsman redeemer, the one that had the ability to redeem and had the heart to redeem, and he is a picture of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. As we look at Boaz, we see the redeemer, in the story. And we'll talk more about that in another message. And then a third main character is this Gentile woman named Ruth. And she is a picture of one who had decided under the leadership of the Holy Spirit working in her heart that she no longer wanted to be a part of the Moabite people. But she said to Naomi, I want your God to be my God. I want your people to be my people. She is a picture of a new convert who needs to be disciple, who needs to grow, but she's looking for grace. So as we look at the activities of Ruth and these verses we've just read, we see a woman who is looking for the grace of God. And so I want to point out tonight some elements in her search that are the same as what goes on in our lives, in our search to be what the Lord God wants us to be. Let's follow Ruth in these few verses as she is looking for God's grace. Are you looking for God's grace? I hope so. We all need the grace of God. We are only saved by the grace of God 
through faith alone, in Christ alone. Well, let's look first of all at the purpose of her search. And we find that in verse 2. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Well, what was she looking for? Ruth left because she was looking for food. Notice what she wanted to do. She wanted to go into the field and glean ears of corn. You see, both her and Naomi needed to eat. I don't know why Naomi was not also going into the field at this time and why Naomi told Ruth, go ahead. But Ruth wanted to go because she knew of their need, their need to eat. Let me tell you, that I believe describes what a new convert really wants when they come to the Word of God. Can I share with you my testimony about after I received Christ? I'm sure you've heard it before, that after I received Christ, I wanted to get into the Word of God. Somebody gave me a Bible that I could actually read. I was flunking out of school. I was not doing well. I was running with the wrong kind of people. I could care less about my education. But now all of a sudden, I had a desire to read. And it was a Catholic nun that gave me a good news for modern man. A Bible that I could read. Had little stick figure drawings in it. Some of you can remember the good news for modern man. It is not a translation of the Bible. It is a paraphrase of the King James Version. And it was put together by a man during the great Blitzkrieg, whenever uh, the, the bombing blitz was happening in London, and, and uh, they were forced underground. And as they were forced underground, uh, with the bombing going on above them, uh, one Christian man took his King James Bible in the New Testament, took a pencil, and began writing uh, what he was reading in common language so that the children could understand. And so he wrote it in simple language. Not a translation, but a paraphrase. And it was just what I needed when I first became a Christian. Because I was able to read it, and because I just continually read. I was hungry for the Word of God. I wanted to know what the Lord wanted to say to me. I wanted to know what God was telling me to do and how to live. And so I got into the Word of God. In the same way, I was hungry. Well, here we see where Ruth is hungry and desired to grow. So she was searching for food, but then secondly, we see that she was searching for favor. She said, I shall find grace. You see, Ruth was looking for a landowner who would allow her to, to glean the field and to, and to grow, in spite of the fact that she was different. She had a different nationality. She may have looked different, may have been a different ethnic group, but in spite of her past, not being an Israelite, despite the fact that she may have spoken a different language, may have looked differently, she was still looking for grace. And she found it. Someone was willing to help her. Church, I hope that when we see people come through the doors of our church, no matter who they are, where they come from, when they make a commitment to the Lord to receive Christ, it is our responsibility to help them find grace and grow in the Lord. She wanted to please the Lord, but she had struggles. I can tell you that when people receive Christ, there's a part of them that wants to grow, but immediately, I will also tell you, the devil wants to snatch that away. He doesn't want them to grow. And it is our responsibility to not let them just simply fall by the wayside. Now, having said that, they must take responsibility for their growth, but we need to take responsibility to do everything we can 
to disciple and to help them find the favor that they're looking for because they are looking for God's favor. They are looking for that joy that comes by living for the Lord. Well, third, and that brings us to our next point, because she was also looking for fulfillment. Notice her statement. Let me now go. She wanted to help Naomi. She wanted to serve. You know, one of the things that I find in new believers is there's an instinct in the new believer that they're to serve the Lord. But if they're not careful, they'll look around at other folks in the church that aren't serving but sitting, and they'll think that's what I'm supposed to do is just sit and soak. Listen, believers that sit and soak end up becoming sour, amen? And I don't want you to become sour, and so I want you to get active and serve the Lord. Here is a new believer that wanted to serve. We need to ask, what would Jesus do? In fact, what would Jesus have me to do? How can I serve the Lord? Real discipleship. When you really begin to grow and get into the Word, you're going to want to serve. There is something wrong when somebody claims the name of Jesus but doesn't serve the Lord. Well, second, we not only see the purpose of her search, we see the providence in her search in verse 3. Let me read that again. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Well, how is it that God was caring for both Ruth and Naomi? First of all, God took care of her by his command in the past. You see, that word providence, this morning I, I looked that up in the, in the thesaurus, and, and I knew that providence meant uh, uh, by the will of God or, or with God's intervention, but I didn't realize how that the world will use the word providence for fate. I'm going to tell you, the providence of God is not fate. It is the hand of God directing in our lives. We serve a sovereign God, and He is working in the lives of people. If you're here tonight, God is working in your life. You're not here by accident. If you're watching this, I want you to know it's not by accident that you're watching this as well. Providence is God's intervening in your life to do something wonderful. And by command, God had already done something wonderful in the life of Ruth because he had given a commandment that after the reapers had gone into the field, there would still be some food left behind. Let me read the law of God from Leviticus 19, verses 9 and 10. He told the people, And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest, and thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, Neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard, for thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. You see, God had already worked out in the past a way to care for those in need. I am so thankful here at Uly Baptist for the variety of ways in which we care for the community through the food pantry, and those who, who work so hard and diligently to, to gather the food together, and then those who come and distribute the food, and then those who, after all the work's been done, so they think, still come back and tear down the boxes and take out the trash and clean up after it's all done. And those who go to Gracie's Kitchen and serve the hot meals. But along with that, it's not enough simply to do the social work. We need to do the work of evangelizing and sharing the gospel at every point. Because that's what was happening here. It, you see, 
The purpose of the law wasn't simply to meet a social need. It was to meet a spiritual need. And that's what was happening in the life of both Ruth and Naomi because of God's command in the past. Well, we can also see that there is also God's control in the present. This verse says that it was her hap to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz. And that word hap means happening. As if it just happened to be that way. That she lighted or she came to the field of Boaz. I want you to know again that the providence of God was this was no accident. This was God's plan working in her life. And if you're a believer and you look at your life and you think, well, that was just an accident. No, God has a plan. And he is working in your life all the time. It's not a coincidence. I say it's a God incidence. You see, God wants to work in your life. And again, if you're listening, God wants to do a great work in your life. He wants to forgive of sin. If you're a believer and you've fallen, He wants to help you up. And if you've lost your way, He wants to put you back on the path. Well, God had already determined that in the life of Ruth, there was going to be a husband and there was going to be a baby. And that was no accident. And just as the Lord worked in Ruth's life, he works in each and every one of our lives. Listen to Romans chapter 8 verses 28 through 31 that says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. I'm so thankful that when I couldn't see it, God could see it from a different perspective. He was always there, leading and guiding. And I'm thankful for the providential care that he gives us. Well, third, we see the person in her search in verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech. And his name was Boaz. Now, I know that this probably is not the way a pastor ought to say it in 2021 in our politically correct language, but it's biblically correct. Because I'm going to tell you, she thought she was out looking for a meal, but God wanted to show her a man. Amen. We're living in a world that thinks that, uh, that, that, that peop women don't need men and men don't need women. I'm going to tell you, God made us that way. That men and women, a man and a wife, they're to complete one another. And this was true. You see, she went looking for food, but God's going to give her a family. I'm so thankful that when I went to church looking for an ice cream cone and a piece of pizza, that when I got to that church, Somebody cared about me and told me about Jesus. When I received Christ, the man Jesus Christ, the Son of God and God the Son, I am so thankful that when I came to receive Christ as my Savior, I not only received the Lord, I also received a whole new family the church of the living God. Ruth doesn't know it, but she's about to see the real object of her search. God is bringing a person into her life, and it's no accident. If you're listening tonight, I want you to know you're no accident. God created you to be just who you are, and God loves you. 
this world. In this world, you'll have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. If you're looking for love in the world, you're looking in the wrong place. But when you're looking for love and life in Jesus Christ, you've come to the right place. Because you're no accident and you're loved by God. And it's no accident tonight that you're listening as we talk about Jesus Christ. Because he was also a related man. Did you notice what the word of God says? He was a kinsman. Boaz was qualified to fill the role of the kinsman redeemer because he was related to Elimelech. Now the law of the kinsman redeemer is recorded in Numbers chapter 27 verses 8 through 11. You might want to write that down. Notice what it says. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel saying, if a man die and have no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then you shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father hath no brother, then you shall give his inheritance unto his kinmen, that is, next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. Now this is more than a hierarchy of how the inheritance is to hand, be handed out. This is also how God wanted those who were helpless to be cared for. Naomi and Ruth were both widows who needed to be cared for and Boaz is the kinsman redeemer that God called to care for these that are in need. In much the same way, Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Remember, Boaz is simply a picture of Jesus in the Old Testament. Jesus came so that we could be cared for. Notice that Boaz was a rich man. He was a mighty man of of wealth. He had the resources to care for Ruth. I'm so thankful that Jesus is rich. He is rich in his grace and he's willing to forgive. He is rich in his ability to take a life and turn it around. Turning away from sin and turning to the Savior. He is rich in his love. And if you're listening tonight, I want you to know that Jesus, who was rich, became poor, according to the book of Philippians, so that we might be rich in his grace. He died on the cross, he paid for our sin, but praise God, he rose from the grave. And he is the victor over sin and death. And he offers us eternal life. He wants to bring us to the Father. He paid the debt of sin that I could not pay. Boaz again is a picture of the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament. God has given Jesus an exalted name. It seems like every sermon I bring this passage up. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 in closing. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. One day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, I want to conclude this section from Ruth with three simple questions. Are you sure you're saved? Do you know for certain that you've been born again? And if you are saved, can you honestly say that you're growing in the Lord like you should be? And then third, are you hungry? 
in your spiritual life. Right now, are you where you need to be? If not, I've got good news. God's field of grace is wide open. If you're lost, come to him and be saved. If you're saved, you've lost your way, come to him. He'll receive you, put you back on the path. And if you're on the path and you're just hungry, come to him and he'll fill you. I'm going to ask every head be bowed and every eye closed. Father, I pray for us tonight. And I pray that if there's someone watching this service, someone here tonight, they're not certain that if they were to die, they would go to heaven. They don't know for sure that there's been that time when they've been saved, when they have made that great profession that they want you to be their God. They want the church to be your fam their family and they want to live for you. Father, I pray that tonight would be the night that they would want to receive Christ in their heart, to become part of God's forever family and serve the Lord. Father, I pray for believers tonight how easily we are drawn away. Father, I pray that we would come back to you. And Father, I pray for believers that are hungry tonight to grow, to read and study your word, to pray and discover your will. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed, if tonight you'd say, you know what, I'm not sure, I'm not certain that if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. Tonight, would you accept Christ as your Savior? If you would, I'd like to lead you in a prayer. And you can invite Christ in your heart right now, right where you are. Would you pray a prayer in your heart like this? Dear God, I know that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know I have sinned and need forgiveness. Please forgive me. I am willing to turn away from living for sin and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord, the ruler of my life. Come into my heart and life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. Well, if you just prayed that prayer with me, I'm going to ask that you would let me know. This week I've received two emails from people in our own community that are not members of Uly Baptist. I'm so thankful for those of you that watch online. If you would, if you made a commitment to the Lord tonight of any kind, would you let me know? You can call me at 904-226-5547. Listen, if Christ has done a work in your life, you're going to want people to know. And so share that. Call me, let me know. It could be that that's maybe a little too intimidating. You can email me at Doug at Uliebaptist.com. I'd just like to know that God is working in your life. And I'd love to have the opportunity to pray with you and for you. God bless you, and thank you for watching this evening. Let us pray. Father God, we do thank you for this opportunity to come tonight, Father, in prayer. Father, we thank you, uh, as always, for the opportunity to worship you and praise you. Now, Father, we have many on our list tonight, Father, but um, I, I, I ask that tonight we focus on those who need salvation. Father, we all know someone who's struggling in sin. We know of lost people right in our family and in our friends and in our coworkers. Father, may we have a burden for the lost. Father, I pray that each and every one of us here tonight, Father, will be burdened for the lost, that we could, in our witness, uh, bring uh, people to Christ. Father, we just pray today for a boldness. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to pray. I thank you for the opportunity to pray for our brothers and sisters who are struggling with their health, Father. I ask for your healing to be upon them, Father. I pray for the doctors and physicians that are attending in their care, Father. I pray 
that they use the talents that you have bestowed upon them for healing, Father, to, to minister um, medically in their lives, Father. I pray, Father, for those who are struggling and, and, and are homebound, Father. I ask that you strengthen them, that you come close to them, Father, that they feel your presence in their life. Father, that they just know that they are loved by you. Father, I thank you once again for each and every one here tonight, Father. I pray for a strengthening of the body of Christ. I pray that each and every one of us here and those who are listening online, Father, that will be strengthened by the studying of your word. Father, may it, may it just resound in our lives, Father, that it would just strengthen us to, to be of good courage to be able to speak the gospel. Father, this world is a lost and dying world, Father, and we just pray that we will take the great commission, Father, that we will take it to heart, Father, and that we will have that burden for the lost and that we will spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen.